So an important habit in your marriage is honoring your partner. And as I've expressed in the last couple of lessons, this is a decision. It's a decision to see your partner as a person of dignity and worth. The way to think about it is that it's something you confer upon your partner. It's a decision that comes from inside you and says, I honor, cherish, and respect you. I care about your needs and wants as much as my own. And I'm here to give you, give to you, and strengthen you in your journey of life. Well, there was a philosopher by the name of Martin Buber who said that we can come from one of two orientations or one of two ways of being in our relationships with others. One of these ways of being he called I-it, in which we see others as objects who either help us realize what we want or hinder us from what we want. When we see each other as objects, we relate to them from mistrust and suspicion. We may even see them as adversaries with whom we must compete or from whom we must protect ourselves. The second way of being, Buber called I-thou, in which we see others as human beings with their own needs, wants, feelings, and opinions as real as our own. We see them through a filter of respect. We recognize that what unites us is greater than what divides us. The motives of other people are basically good and similar to our own. We want the same things out of life. Other people are our allies rather than adversaries. Well, these two attitudes become self-fulfilling prophecies. If we view other people from protection and alienation, then we experience and set up win-lose interactions. On the other hand, if our essential view of others is love and goodwill, then we experience win-win interactions. You'll notice that Buber connects the words I it and I thou with a hyphen. By doing this, he's making each of these terms a single word, which means that yourself cannot be pried apart from how you see another. Buber is saying that personal identity and quality of relationships are the same thing. I am the way I see another. This means that you change as you see your spouse differently. If you start to see your spouse as a thou rather than an it or an object, you undergo a change of heart inside your own being. Think back to my story about coming home from our camping trip. When I arrived home that particular evening after we had been left and chased off the mountain by a fire, I was upset with my wife because she wasn't giving me everything that I wanted. I built my case that she was selfish and unsupportive. I was viewing her through an I-it paradigm. She wasn't giving me what I thought I needed at the moment, and so I allowed myself to be a victim of her behavior. Well, not at first, but gradually during the next day, I really began to look at Judy, not as someone who was impeding me from what I wanted, but rather as someone who had her own needs and feelings. And as I began to shift my perspective towards her, my heart softened, and I realized that I had been telling myself a false story about her intent. As I saw her from I thou, I felt some compassion, even some gratitude. She's given me so much support through so many years. She's forgiven me for so many absences and even indifferences. She had done nothing to harm me the previous night. Well, I want to mention a man by the name of Terry Warner, a founder of the Arbinger Institute and author of a number of books, including The Anatomy of Peace and Leadership and Self-Deception. Although his, his work is not about marriage per se, he teaches about how to heal our relationships. And we do so not by getting others to be different, but by changing our own hearts. I recommend him. I want to share a story he tells in his book, Bonds That Make Us Free. He talks about a woman by the name of Rachel who after 20 years of marriage was jolted to learn that her husband had been having an affair. <clears throat> Quoting from her story, she says, One day in a heap of tears, I decided I still had a life and that I would not spend it being bitter and poisoning the lives of our children with venom about their father. I felt wonderful after I made that decision. People now tell me that they're amazed at my attitude, but 
To me, it's not so amazing. I just want to live a clean life, and poison does not allow that, and it does not allow for growth. She goes on and says, in the last week, I've had two bitter divorce women call me and offer a shoulder to cry on. They're both certain that I'm seething with anger because they are. In their eyes, I belong to a club of women who need to let it all out. Both of them are offering to cry with me, talk with me when I need to talk, and ultimately have me participate in fanning the flames of I have been wounded and I will not, everyone, not let anyone forget it. Well, Rachel continues her story. When I told them how I feel that my husband is ill, weak, and suffering, and that I hurt for him, they tell me I'm denying my anger, and that this anger is justified. They don't hear me when I say that I want life, not death, and I would, and I would carry that bitterness around in my heart forever." <clears throat> End of quote. Well, although I have to say it's very natural to feel some anger and even pity about an affair after 20 years of marriage, and I certainly don't want to tell somebody that this may not be part of your process, but I also want you to know that as we adopt an I-thou approach to our relationships, we begin to see our spouse's needs, feelings, and behavior more deeply and more compassionately. You may not get there immediately, but I invite you to keep the concept in mind, the difference between I it and I thou. You do this as you don't just look at a person, but as you take a moment to really see them. Look deeply into their face or their eyes, or watch them when they aren't noticing. Come from an intent to communicate to them what you would like to receive yourself. This might mean that you offer a silent wish for them as you first greet them, such as, I wish you joy, I wish you prosperity, I wish you happiness or peace. Even though you don't necessarily say the words aloud, this person will feel your intent and goodwill. Of course, you have to be conscious of doing this. You have to practice it daily. I practiced it with my wife as I was preparing my course on happiness. I mentally put a, a out a ton of goodwill and warmth every morning as she talked to me. And I could tell because the rest of the day she felt it because of the interest and warmth that I felt coming back from her. As you do what I'm talking about, you'll notice that you're not only building good relationships with others, but you are in fact feeling more goodwill and happiness in your own life. Put out what you want to come back. Put out toward your spouse in terms of goodwill and intent and presence and kind words what you would like to feel from them. In the next lesson, I'm going to expand further upon this theme of honoring your spouse by talking about a rather popular concept. It's uh, Gary Chapman's concept of love languages.